Okay, I've tied it a few bits away and we are re oh sorry 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 we are ready to take a look at heat embossing obviously a lot of people use heat embossing for sentiments and of course you can use it on larger stamps to give that lovely raised shine and they're both great techniques um and I wanted to show you a few others. And then we'll go through how you actually achieve these different techniques. Another option is to use it as a kind of a resist. Here I've got a white piece of cardstock. I've heat embossed in white and I've then sponged over the top with a sponge brayer and you get the resist from the heat embossed areas this one's very similar heat embossed in white onto watercolor paper and done some water coloring just quite random water coloring and again it forms a resist and you can take this a step further and actually use it as a resist to colour within the image. It just helps you not to go over the lines um, because you've got that little bit of raised edge that helps to repel everything back. And you can use that for colouring with any different medium, really. So using it as a resist is a really great technique as well. Um, before we move on, we'll just go through everything that you need to be able to heat emboss. First of all, you need a Versamark pad. And if you've not seen my lesson on inks, I talk about this a little bit more in that lesson. But basically, it's a sticky ink. Um, so we're going to apply sticky ink to the cardstock. The powder is then going to stick to the ink and then when we use a heat tool we're going to melt it and it's going to fix in place. So that's the first thing we need. The second thing we need is the powder. Okay I've got a silver one here to show you something with and of course the heat tool. Um, now the heat tool, do be careful with it. It does get hot, <laughs> as the name would suggest. Um, if you're heating very small bits of cardstock or elements, then do use some tweezers. I tend to heat from underneath the cardstock, but different people find different approaches work best for them. Some people heat from above. So give it a little practice, see which you, you find works best for you. Then... You either want a bit of scrap paper or a tray of some sort to catch your powder and allow you to pop it back into its container. And the first technique that's a little bit different that I wanted to show you is actually embossing entire die cuts. And I've chosen this die cut from the Garage Gears die set and i've cut it out of whisper white cardstock um but i want it to have a silvery shine to it now obviously if i've got silver foil sheets or something like that i can cut it out of there but if i haven't all is not lost and what i need to do is i need to apply the sticky ink to the die and the die cut. I'm literally pressing it into the pad. Now flip it over, take the pad out of the way. Pop my powder. Oh, we've got a sticky lid. There we go. Pop my powder all over. Don't be scared of putting plenty in. Uh, you're going to rescue the vast majority of it anyway. And then 
with some tweezers. Just bear in mind that where the tweezers are, we might lose a bit of the powder. So if you've got a section that's going to hide under something else, that's perfect for that bit. I'm going to switch my heat tool on. I'm going to give it a couple of seconds just to warm up. And then I'm going to try to keep this in shot as I heat it. And you can see it starting to turn. And as soon as you see it turn, move your heat gun. And you can see that almost looks like a metallic element now. And if you want to just kind of finish it off, you can hold that down gently just to get that final little bit. Um, they are quite powerful, so they do tend to blow bits of cardstock around. Um, but there, you've kind of achieved the same effect of either cutting out of sil a silver foil sheet or having a metal element, but without the weight and without the cost of a metal element as well. So you can do that in any color um if you've stamped something you can then give it a layer of clear embossing powder just to give it a sheen that also looks really effective i'm just going to pop this back in here before we have any incidents or accidents with that um I'll perhaps use that for the next example as well, just to save getting any... Oh, look at that. To save incidents or accidents, I said, didn't I? Oh, well. We'll ignore that. <laughs> Another thing you can do is actually emboss little wooden elements. And similar approach. I'm just going to press that into the pad pick it out, gently turn it over pour the powder on I really don't know how I've got this absolutely everywhere <laughs> I'm not sure <laughs> but I definitely have okay, forage about in here to try and find it again and then I just want to pick it up gently with the tweezers. Obviously, you can't... Oh, I think I've shook a bit too much off there. You can't do this one without tweezers. I'm just going to hold it against the paper. And you can see that really thin layer just turned ever so quickly let me just try and make that get that to catch the light for you there do you see so now we've got a metallic looking element rather than a wooden one very similar to just doing it with the cardstock but if you do have wooden elements then that's an extra technique that you can use to uh, get more from them and that's what we're after isn't it we want value for money we want to make sure that we can use our products to achieve different techniques we want them to be versatile just try and tidy up a smidgen before we do the next one so we've covered Embossing sentiments, embossing standard images, uh, embossing die cuts and wooden elements. We've looked at using embossing powder as a resist for either colouring over or colouring within. Um, next up, we're going to look at how we can effectively 
emboss in any ink colour. Okay? For example, I want to emboss this tool um, kit, toolbox. I want to emboss it in Bermuda Bay ink for some reason. But of course, I don't have any Bermuda Bay <laughs> embossing powder because Stampin' Up! has metallics and white. Um, but what it does have is clear. Which means what we can do is we take our stamp, we apply the sticky ink, We apply our standard ink, we stamp, we cover that with clear embossing powder. And if you think about the order that we've just done that, the verse mark went first which means it's closest to the to the stamp such that when we switch it over it becomes the top layer you can see that looks pretty dull and uninspiring at the minute doesn't it so we'll bring the heat tool in again and if we just watch See that shine starting to appear? Switch it over. And we have effectively embossed in Bermuda Bay ink. Now, I think that's pretty cool. I hope you agree. <laughs> that's one of my other favourite techniques with embossing powder. Which just leaves us to talk about embossing paste. And given that I've made quite such a mess, I'm going to stop the video again and I'll come back and talk to you about embossing paste. See you in a moment. 